Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to day three of theCUBE's live coverage of the Red Hat Summit here at the Colorado Convention Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, lots of buzzwords this week. AI, of course, uh, open source, because we're at a Red Hat Summit. Virtualization is another one we're hearing a lot about this Absolutely. week. Absolutely, and I, I think, again, looking at how you actually productionalize it and keep it running is a big thing to put it mildly. Indeed, well, and a great segue to introduce our next two guests. We have Gaurav Rishi, he is the VP of product at Veeam. Thank Hello you so there. much for coming on, Gaurav. Yeah, pleasure to be here. And making a triumphant return to theCUBE, former host and analyst, uh, Stu Miniman, he is the Senior Director of Market Insights Hybrid Platforms at Red Hat. Thank you so much for, for coming on, Stu. Uh, I, I'm glad to be here with our, our partners here, Veeam and Rebecca and Rob. Awesome to be uh, on camera with you. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, Gaurav, I want to start with you. Talk a little bit, talk a little bit about why you're here and, and, and talk about this Veeam, Kasten, and Red Hat partnership. Absolutely, so first of all, you know, the quick summary around Veeam for the customers who might not, or our listeners who might not know about Veeam, we actually are the number one market leader for data protection, laser focused on that. In fact, we have 450,000 customers. A lot of them use virtual machines, and that's what we back up. And you talked about OpenShift virtualization. We are at a point where we are getting calls from customers saying, hey look, I want to keep my options open. One of the tenets for us has always been data freedom. And so here we are as Kasten, which was a Kubernetes centric product. And now we are seeing virtual machines come in there. And so right time, right place, and no better partner than Red Hat to be able to go make, enable that. So that's the reason I'm here. Yeah, and actually, I love how Gaurav said, right time, right place, because a lot of the conversations, it's like, we've talked about VM and containers for a long time. OpenShift virtualization, not a new product. The, the open source project underneath it, been there. You know, Rob, you've been at the KubeCons, yeah. we've been talking about this for a couple of years, but um, there's certain industry events that are now having everybody look with a fresh eye, and as Gaurav said, absolutely, you know, when I think virtualization, one of the main things I think underneath it is like, hey, how am I doing my backup, my disaster recovery, and all those pieces, and Veeam was one of the earliest and biggest partners in that virtualization ecosystem, and when you talk to go to a more modern environment, you know, Kasten was the first backup partner for OpenShift virtualization, which has been a super hot topic here at this show, to be sure. Oh, to put it mildly, I, I, think, <laughs> it's, it, I, I think again, uh, you know, when you start to look at it, and you kind of, Gaurav, you, you kind of talked about it, I mean, the, the elephant in the room is that, you know, there's licensing changes about with VMware and things like that, and people are starting to look. In fact, I've sat with a uh, set of customers yesterday uh, during lunch, and we were having a, a conversation, and they're, they're looking at that and automation and being that. What is Casted really leaning into with, open, with OpenShift Vert? right now and what, how is that really, what are you seeing the take up on it and how are you seeing that go? Yeah, no, so I think first of all, I've heard the word OpenShift virtualization about 100 times yeah. over the last two days, so you're absolutely right, that's top of mind. We want to meet customers where they are. I think that's the, that's the key point and I think we were always saying customers first, partners always, and so really the point out here is, we've got serious customers now who are actually virtual machine customers and now have containers running in OpenShift platforms. So we've talked about the US Navy, for example. It doesn't get more serious than that, to be honest. You know, multi-year deal, they use virtual machines, and now they have containers on OpenShift. We have customers like Zensiac, which is a Volvo company, which has virtual machines, also have containers, again, OpenShift platform. I, I could go on on a long list. So I think, first of all, we are at the tip off the iceberg, I want to say, at this point of time. But like I said, the fact that you have customers knocking on your doors, amazing. In terms of the technology piece of it, you know, Stu said it. We started off as a startup, as Kasten, five years ago. One of our first partners actually was Red Hat. We've been contributing to KubeVert, which is the open source project under the covers. OpenShift virtualization is going ahead and providing the trust to these customers to say, look, out of this universe of 800 partners that might be in the CNCF ecosystem, how can you go ahead and actually get the handholding that you might require? And that's where the integrations have come in. So whether it's going ahead and making sure we have the right scale, whether it's about going ahead and having a migration plan, that's really where we are collaborating and bringing it to market. Well, you talked about the various different customers you have, including the U.S. Navy. How are you coming to terms with a set of best practices? I mean, you, you talked, I, 
I imagine that as you, you were saying, meeting customers where they are. Some are further along in their journey. Some re require more hand-holding. How are you, or are you in fact, seeing that there are certain commonalities between these customers or, or are they really their own ships? Yeah, so, so, so Rebecca, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the challenge we face right now is many customers that say, hey, I need to make a change fast. Unfortunately, those of us in the IT world know migration is neither simple it's nor fast <laughs> uh, to be able to do, but when you talk about best practices, if you look at, uh, first of all, we have tooling to help. There's one of the tools we talked about in the keynote stage, Migration Toolkit for Virtualization, which is part of the conveyor open source uh, tools out there. That has built into it the insights from years and thousands of customers can do analysis of your VM estate and say like, these ones are good. Like maybe it's 20 to 50% of the ones would say, hey, these are great, we can actually you know, migrate these other, these other ones, we need a little bit of work. So it's not something that we can do overnight, but Migration Toolkit for virtualization to scan and understand, and then we've actually been doing some deep integration between Ansible and what we've been doing on the open source side to help with that migration, because we know we need to automate this, because otherwise, you know, that long migration will take even longer, and a lot of customers are sitting on the clock and trying to make these things, so we are all learning fast in these environments. Um, I wish it was only 100 times I'd heard this topic, because it, it, it's been a little bit overwhelming for everyone. The good news is, we've got a broad ecosystem, not just our important ISV partners like, like Kasten, but the channel partners, many of them who have a lot of experience. Uh, we've got great things even from, you know, Dell with the Dell Apex Cloud, I know you talked about them. Uh, they know a thing or two about virtualization and we have a wonderful offering that we announced last year and is going full bore uh, this year, as well as, you know, hey, if you want to accelerate what you're doing in the cloud, we can run OpenShift virtualization on the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, Rosa, and by the way, you know, it's a reminder people, it's like, hey, what's this OpenShift virtualization? It is a feature of OpenShift. It's another operator, and there's no extra cost, it's something that you get there, it goes together, and you can take advantage of all these modern cloud-native architectures, so there's some new learnings that people need to have. We've been doing a lot of labs, the labs, have been, I'm sure you've heard, like some of the sessions, some get a lot of there, some get attrition, the labs are full. My team that's been doing labs, it's like, yep, Today they're doing the extra third lab because they are all full and there's wait lists because people want to get hands on and understand to help you know, that education process and spread that knowledge and leverage what everybody else is doing to your best practices. It's part of the community, yeah. 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 Just, which is such a big selling point for Red Yeah, no, that's a lot. I was just going to add two quick points <laughs> in there, uh, which is A, I think first of all, you know, how we move customers, everyone has in a different place, like you said, and you need to build that trust. So for example, Kasten announced that we have the only solution right now which is FIPS compliant. Now that's really important if you're a federal customer. We talked about, for example, the Navy. So now that comes in and is an important part in addition to the scale requirements. So not to geek out too much, but we are the only ones who might have block mode support. Why is that important? Because you want to go ahead and enable things like vMotion-like capabilities when you get to an OpenShift environment because that's what you might be used to. The second part is, I think what you touched on, when you're working with partners, um, you know, Kindrel, for example, good uh, Veeam partner, good Red Hat partner, to taking this con solution and actually going ahead and interfacing with the customers, so you get that continuity in there. So I think that ecosystem point is also really important. Yeah, and you're also meeting, to your point about meeting them where they are, and, and Stu kind of went through all of the different deployment methodologies that where you can be OpenShift. Are you seeing that you have customers that are using all of the above and using that as their strategy and looking to you for that data protection and cyber resilience? Oh yeah, so first of all, I'm glad you used the word cyber resilience yeah. because that's the other thing despite the OpenShift virtualization and it's something which cuts across almost any kind of deployment. It's one of the number one concerns in boards and CIOs, CSOs, name, name your favorite uh, role out here. So I think that's the other part which we are focusing a lot on. It's not just about you know, the FIPS compliance part of it. We've also done a bunch of integrations to go ahead and make sure when it comes to ransomware, which is still stealing the headlines out there, that you know, backup is not just your last line of defense, but ultimately your backup is only as good as your restores. So how do you, be, how do you go ahead and make sure you have immutability so that you can actually depend and get back on something that you can actually trust, can't be touched on. But we've also added capabilities by integrations into things like ACS, ACM. So you get early detections with integrations into seam vendors when somebody tries to go ahead and mess around with your backups. So I think that is a truly important part and goes hand in glove to make OpenShift virtualization a reality and that's really a focus area for us. So, so what, what was new in the announcement? You guys announced 
you know, Veeam 7 or Kasten 7, sorry. Uh, I know it's the same I, I'm, company actually, I'm, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> actually that gives me a segue to say, yeah. you know, one of the branding changes which we did talk about was the official name, and I know we never talked about it, yeah. but you got it right, which is Veeam Kasten, that's what it is. So we have Veeam Kasten for Kubernetes, just like we have other Veeam products. So it's really important, back to that 450,000 customers, so people can get the brand continuity, but also get the specialization of the fact that Kasten is actually the fourth time running, number one recognized leader for, as a leader and an outperformer in the GigaOM Kubernetes data protection report. So now what's new in version seven? Actually, it's two themes. You hit on one, which was cyber resilience, yep. and I think things like FIPS, the things that we go ahead and have immutability are all new in there. We actually have support for image stream for the geeks on the listening side. That's the way to go protect OpenShift images when you want to go ahead and have automated uh, you know, backups and roll back into some points. The other theme we have is around enterprise solutions. So I think both Stu and I were hitting on the fact that wide ecosystem partnership but I think customers are looking for simplicity and trusted partners out here. So we've doubled down on relationships with some of our key partners. Red Hat, the fact that we are here in full force, is a testament to that. And what that means is actually we've got this solution which includes these side integrations we've been talking about to help you move to an OpenShift virtualization, to help you go ahead and start cloud native and make sure you can move to things like OpenShift Plus or have a hybrid story so you can go ahead and have things like ARO or ROSA as well as on-premises. So I think those are the key pieces we see across data protection, cyber resiliency, as well as application mobility. Yeah, you know, unfortunately everybody would love and they say, hey, I just want that easy button, just tell me, you know, one, two, three, isn't there a wizard that did this? The reality is that every company, how deep they do the integration, what APIs they had, what storage they have beyond, uh, beyond those, there's a lot of uh, pieces of that, and in the data center, uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, CIO said, every application we really built at Taj Mahal, and uh, it would be nice if you could be more off the shelf uh, for, for these kind of environments, but we do have, we've got tooling, the ecosystem, which, you know, Kasten has been there from day one, uh, is building out, and we can help you there, it just, it is going to take a little bit of time, so hopefully, as a customer, you want to give yourself uh, that, that time if there is a forcing function, and it's too near term, figure out how to be able to extend that a little bit longer because we can work through that. Uh, over some time, we are all learning and yeah, companies like Kindrel and the like are absolutely going to be huge partners to be able to help uh, get over that hump and get you to the new environment um, because there is that, that translation that you need between this is the way I used to do it and this is the way I want to do it, which to be honest, I've been talking to VM admins about this for the last five years, about like, hey, what's the next thing that I'm going to work on? It's automation or like, hey, maybe I want to make sure that for the longevity of my career, how do I take advantage of this whole AI thing that everybody is? That's where I've been spending a lot of my time this week. And to be honest, if you stayed in that older environment, you're not ready architecturally to take advantage of AI and we're all diving into this from a career standpoint because this is where it's going to go for the next 10 to 20 years. Well, speaking of that, I mean, I mean I, I'm, I'm curious about how you talk with customers about that. I mean, you're just talking about it, even from an individual standpoint of, hey, if I want, I got to be working for a bit longer. I need to, I need to know this stuff, get, get cool with it, experiment, learn, understand it. How do you talk with customers about really diving in and making sure that they're, they're learning it, but then also ultimately seeing some, something back in the ROI? Yeah, Rebecca, I love it. I mean, you, you, you do great work on the, uh, talking about the future of work uh, and everything like that, and right from a career career standpoint, what are the things that are going to get me excited? I mean, you know, people watch our keynote, you know, our CEO is like reinvigorated. We're all digging in because there's so much that we learn here. So, you know, automation is a key, you know, tool set and skill set that, you know, there, there's lots of room here. Ansible Fest is in buzzing and, and lots there that will help along that technology because every organization, I'm being asked to do AI it's not new headcount and new budget for it, so you are taking some existing people and helping to train them up and skill them up to take advantage of that. So again, I almost look at it, this virtualization and a virtualization move and AI adoption go really together because I need scalability. I need to be able to do things even more um, and interact with it, so if I don't, move along that journey towards modernization, I can't take advantage of the opportunity of AI. Well, yeah. I, I was going to say, since you brought it up, I, I, I think it's only fair to say to Gaurav in uh, understanding, 
because if we don't talk about AI, I think <laughs> I we'll know. get kicked like, off yeah, the yeah, internet here. We don't talk about so, uh, we don't talk about AI. How do you see people protecting it? Because they got to yeah. protect the models, they got to protect the yeah. data. It's it's about the ecosystem, and it, again, we saw it from all of all on stage. And in fact, the demos that were done by Chris uh, Morgan and all of this around, hey, all of those pieces from when it's on the laptop to all the way when it's in production on OpenShift AI. How are you seeing customers protecting their AI? No, that's a great question. So, first of all, I mean, to Rebecca's point, the number one skill, just to, just to close on that from my perspective, because I have kids and, you know, it's, it's not just a question of the people here, but it's sort of the next generation too, and I think learning to learn is probably the number one skill I would sort of go ahead and advocate for. All of us need to do it, and we need to do it better than we've ever done before. So, great time to be alive and to be learning, but that would be my general point. I think to your specific question, though, um, what AI has really done, I've never seen so much experimentation in my career that's going on with our companies uh, and all our customers right now, to be able to go and create different types of models. It's brought to the forefront the importance of data and how it can be used for not just automation tasks and things of that nature, but productivity gains as well as differentiation. So now that's important, what's come to the next step is essentially people saying, well I might be using vector databases for example in this particular world, how do I go ahead and protect those vector databases? So we work with companies like EDB who might have a vector interface, or there's a next generation of companies coming in play. So Kasten actually has gone ahead and contributed a project called Canister to CNCF as an open source, which allows you to go ahead and create these blueprints to be able to build protection mechanisms for a lot of these databases. So that's number one. And the second one actually, I, I love this chart which I know IDC came up with, which is essentially asking customers, where are you experimenting and deploying these models? And it's like a pie chart with like equally sized blocks about, I'm trying it in the cloud, I'm trying it on premises. So I think we both talked about freedom of choice and data freedom and being able to work in hybrid environments. I think Kasten's really known in addition to data protection for is the data freedom part of it. So that's the other part we really see customers being super conscious of saying, well, Kubernetes came with the promise of portability, Kasten can actually go ahead and make that a reality. And yeah, that's really where we work. It, it, it's so many of these things echo what we saw in the overall cloud adoption. You know, when I first went to the cloud, oh, do I still need to think about data protection and how about security? Those can't be an afterthought. And some things are a little bit different when we talk about AI. We're talking about some massive uh, bits of data um, and making sure that you know, security is absolutely a piece of it. And even if we talk about, we've talked about open source and AI this week, at the end of the day, if there's proprietary data, um, I want to make sure that's controlled. Many of our customers, that's why you know, I'm getting a small GPU farm, I'm doing it in my data center, because I don't understand well enough yeah. what some of the large solutions are doing if I don't do it in my four walls. I mean, those who have been around long enough, it was really nice when you could just lock the door and not have it connected to the internet and felt safer. Today, of course, security, there, there are no moats anymore, uh, but uh, we, we do need to think about many of the same things. Well, that's right. exciting times, I love it. Learning to learn, I love it. It's All right, great, that's great. great. <laughs> Stu and Gaurav, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, a really enlightening conversation. Thank you very much, thanks for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Streche. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Red Hat, Sum Red Hat Summit. You are watching theCUBE, the leader in technology enterprise coverage and analysis.